What's going on, everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you five of my favorite ARPGs. Now, if you follow my channel at all, I don't cover ARPGs a ton. They are my kind of chill-out games, but I've been talking about them the past few days, and people have requested, like, you know, what I like ARPG-wise, so I'm going to make this one video talking about my favorites. I'm more than happy to talk with people about ARPGs, but I don't really have a lot of interest in making content. That said, never say never. If any great ARPG gets released, I may or may not cover it, though likely not in the rather excessive detail I tend to cover a lot of other games. But while I do play them, again, just kind of in my own time and not for content, I have played quite a few of them, and while I'm not going to pretend to be an expert in each and every one of them, I have reached in-game in all of these. So let's start with the obvious ones. First and foremost, these are in no particular order. I'm not even trying to rank these. This is just my opinions on my favorites. I am not in any way the judge, jury, and executioner of all things ARPG. You're welcome to have your own opinions about these. But first and foremost, we obviously have Diablo 2. Now, I've been enjoying Diablo 2 Resurrected, but I'm kind of counting these as one and the same, really, for the purposes of this video. But as I've mentioned a few times, Diablo is something I played obsessively as a teenager, really. I have thousands of hours in Diablo 2. It's my favorite because, A, it's one of the first video games I played that much, and also, it is, frankly, just very well done. The proof in that is simply the fact that Diablo 2 kind of remains the hallmark of a good ARPG even 20-plus years later. Now, there are things I don't like about Diablo 2, sure. I think some of the progression is a little busted if you're not actively playing with other people. I think the vast majority of set items are very much so underpowered, and while I love the rune word system, they occupy most of your late game loot in terms of what you're actually wearing, and while some classes do need specific unique items, it just felt like outside of a couple of sets, the sets were very underserved, which is something Diablo 3 kind of overcorrected on, but that's another story. Now, when it comes to Diablo 2, I love this game so much that I have leveled every single class. I have my favorites, of course. Druid is actually my top favorite, hands down. So much so that basically any build you can make with a druid, I could off the top of my head list the entire gear progression for and what they want in in-game just from memory. In fact, for wind druid in particular, I could even remember alternatives that you might swap out depending on exactly what you're doing. But it's a game I've just beat to death, and while I would argue there's other ARPGs on this list that are better in many ways and have more interesting systems, Diablo 2 is just a classic, and I'd be lying if I said it wasn't my favorite. Now, next on the list, we have a bit of a controversial one, I'm sure, and that's Diablo 3. Now, I literally just made a video yesterday talking about how Diablo 3 was kind of a big disappointment for me at launch. However, now, I think Diablo 3 is worth playing. It's seen a ton of updates since launch. Most of the terrible features, like the Real Money Auction House, have been replaced. And while I will tell you that Diablo 3, in my opinion, isn't a great Diablo game, it is a great ARPG. It's a game I have a lot of fun playing. And I don't play it nearly as much. I'll log on like maybe once every couple of months and kind of run some rifts and stuff. But my Demon Hunter and my Wizard are easily my best characters. My Demon Hunter can run Torment 13 or 14. I think the max is 16 these days, if my memory serves. But the Reaper of Souls expansion, followed by the rather multitude of updates, have since kind of helped the game out. Now, it does have its negatives, and that is primarily, again, the over-reliance on set items and the ridiculous number bloat. If they stat squished like some of the numbers, I think the game would be in a better place just right off the bat, because the numbers in Diablo 3 get insane. Some of the footage from my Demon Hunter that I'm probably using here, you can see me doing like literally tens of billions of damage. It's nonsense. And again, not the best Diablo game, for reasons I talked about yesterday and I don't want to repeat myself too much on, but honestly a great ARPG, and these days I think it's worth checking out, especially because you can get it discounted quite a bit because it's fairly old. Now, let's move on to the more interesting stuff that people might not be as aware of that I play, or have played, I should say, in some cases. Now, first up, we have Torchlight 2. Now, they've actually released Torchlight 3. I haven't messed with it. I've heard real mixed things. Torchlight 2, I loved when it came out. I've played the original Torchlight. It was a little too simple and sweet for my tastes, but Torchlight 2 was very good. And while truthfully, I haven't played enough of Torchlight 2 recently to really tell you much about the negatives. I will say that one of my favorite things to do 
was I had this max level berserker character who was on like new game plus four, like max end level content. But he was uh, he's a real glass cannon. My whole build idea around him was that I was doing insane damage, but I could only take like a couple hits before he just died. So the real in-game content became like this nail-biting back and forth between me and really stronger enemies that I had a ton of fun with. And beyond that, Torchlight 2 is just a really good gameplay loop. Like most ARPGs, the story is kind of whatever. But the gameplay, the itemization and stuff, it is all on point, which isn't a big surprise as we all know, or you know now at the very least, Torchlight was developed by some of the original Diablo developers. So it's not exactly a surprise. Some of that DNA is fairly obvious and one of my favorites. Now for our next one, we have Wolson, Lords of Mayhem. I loved Wolson. It was actually really good. It had a terrible launch just in terms of like technical stuff. The servers were pretty terrible for it. There were some game breaking bugs and it had a launch that honestly I don't think really ever recovered from. But beyond those things, I do think Wolson has a, a bit of a critical flaw that we'll get into in just a minute. But the actual gameplay and even the story of Wolson I thought was very good, especially compared to other ARPGs, which typically don't have very good stories. But I really enjoyed Wolson's story. It felt very uh, next-gen, I guess, for lack of a better word, at the time. Keep in mind, Wolson's a couple years old now. But there were, like, multi-phase boss fights, just really cool cinematic and, like, wavy combat that was really fun. My primary build that I used for Wolson was like this Kratos wannabe more or less. You had like these chains that you could use as one of the skills, but the skill system combined with how you would allocate like points on a big spinny wheel, much like Path of Exile, kind of made for some fun build ideas and you could see some really unique stuff. And overall, while I do think Wolson is a ton of fun, it's harder to recommend this one because the end game is rough. Wolson is a great game to play until you get to the end of it. And I think the end game for it is just not super compelling, to be honest. Now, they have the Champions of Stormfall stuff, which was the original end game. And it's basically just like a map system we've seen in tons of other ARPGs. But there's like this little city builder gimmick behind the scenes of it. And it, it was just okay, honestly. It just didn't do anything original, which I thought was the real shame because you had all this like really cool stuff going for it. And then you get to the end game and it just felt very cookie cutter map system which combined with the terrible launch, I think really did a number on this one. Now, since then, they've released things like Blood Trail, which adds some interesting mechanics. The problem with Blood Trail, though, is that you can't, like, carry over progress. You have to start a new character to play Blood Trail stuff, which is fine, but it was like a base game update, so it's just kind of frustrating. And as someone who obviously doesn't play, like, up-to-date League and Season stuff all the time, that can be a bit annoying to me. More of a personal gripe on that one, but still. And then last but not least, we have what is arguably the best ARPG on this list, and that is Path of Exile. Path of Exile is incredible for an ARPG. Truth be told, it's the king of the landscape right now. Path of Exile is essentially an MMO ARPG. It's very good. It has easily the most complex and in-depth system of all of these ARPGs combined. There's a ton of build options, tons of ways to play. They also have an in-game map system, but it's actually good. And moreover, they are constantly updating this game. Like every time you turn around, there's new content for Path of Exile. They're working on a sequel. It has an insane amount of just support and content coming to it all the time. And basically Path of Exile is the success and content model other ARPGs wish they could get. Now, that said, it's not without its downsides. Path of Exile is free, but it's heavily, and I mean heavily, monetized, and it gets a little annoying to me sometimes. And the other part is Path of Exile is a hard game to play casually because, again, the in-game systems are just so in-depth. You have to be, like, really on top of stuff or you wind up just following cookie-cutter builds and things, which I don't personally like doing. So while Path of Exile is, in my opinion, the best at what it does, it's a bit of a commitment if you want to get super into it. But there you go, guys, a list of my favorite ARPGs. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, by all means, let me know about some of your favorite ARPGs. There are a ton more besides this. Grim Dawn is one I haven't personally tried, but I hear people talk about a lot, just as an example. Hope you enjoyed the list. If you did, by all means, let me know about everything you've got to say about it down below. But honestly, just thank you so much for watching. The channel just recently hit 40k subscribers, which is just amazing to me honestly still blows me away every time we hit some milestone like that that people want to listen to me talk about video games but thank you truly may you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day